Brass is expensive, and lately it's been very tough to find. So we need to take care of the brass that we have. This video is all about my off-season brass maintenance. Hi, my name is Jason. Let's connect the dots. my off-season brass maintenance down into seven steps and I've written those seven steps on this piece of paper rarely do I have time to do all these seven steps plus I'm not gonna spend all day doing this so I broke in, I broke it down into these seven steps so I keep track of where I'm at in the brass maintenance process step one of my off-season brass maintenance is to deprime the cases the only reason I'm deep priming these cases is so that I can get to the primer pockets and clean them out before I clean the whole case. It seems to make my case cleaning process go so much faster when I can get rid of a lot of that carbon that's in the primer pockets. The only thing to be careful of on this step is your deep priming tool. Make sure it has the right pin for the diameter of the primers you're using. Phase two is I need to clean the brass. And the first thing I do is I clean the primer pockets with this RCBS prep master case. I clean the primer pockets out so that the cleaning of the whole case goes a lot faster. And this is a pretty, this doesn't take very long as you can tell. The next part of phase two is cleaning the brass. I got the primer pockets cleaned out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Hornaday's Ultrasonic Cleaner. Put my glass here. I really like the Hornaday Ultrasonic Cleaner, but I don't want it to be like that's the only thing you can do. Um, some people use a tumbler. Some people clean it by hand. Other people use stainless steel rods. The main thing is you want to get the brass clean, and it's, it's not so much for the performance of the brass, but later on I'm going to nail this brass and when I anneal the brass, if the brass isn't clean, any dirt, any imperfections that's on the brass, it'll just adhere to that case and I won't be able to get it off. So I'm cleaning the brass mainly because of my annealing coming up here in a little bit. I'm just doing my final rinse on these cases. They got done with the ultrasonic cleaner. And the only thing that I have left on phase two is to put these cases on this case drying rack that I made. That I made. And I will let these sit overnight or however long uh, to get them dry before we start the next phase. So what I can do now is I can mark phase two off of my sheet of paper and I'm done with phase two. Step three, I like to color code my brass. This is especially important on my competition brass because I have three 30BR chambers and I want to keep the brass separate for each one of those chambers that the brass is fired in. I used to color code the case head but I found it didn't last very long, plus it was always old in my bolt face. So now what I've done is I've gone to coloring the top of the extractor groove. It seems to last a lot longer, and there's no mess on my bolt face. Bolt face. Hunting brass, it's not as important on hunting brass. I only have one chamber. If you have multiple chambers, then obviously do it. Uh, but on my hunting brass, about the only time I'll color code the extractor groove is when I'm switching out new brass. For example, this last year I switched out some new 22250 brass. So I color coded the new brass to keep it separate from the old. All the previous steps have been about cleaning and organization. And honestly, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with precision and accuracy. That is not the case with this next step. Step four 
annealing. I'm going to explain the basics of annealing. I'm not going to get into the heavy science of it. To make it simple, constant movement of the brass work hardens it. Work hardened brass does not move like new brass. When we anneal, we're realigning the molecules so that the brass can now move like it should. I use a Ken Light annealer for all my annealing purposes. Once I get it set up, it's pretty quick. As fast as I can stick them in this wheel, they're getting done. And it's very uniform. What I'm looking for when I set my annealer up is for a, a deep gold, but it's still shiny. And it's halfway down the body of the case and then up to the neck. Again, pretty quick, very uniform. And that is it for step four annealing. Competition brass, I will anneal every off-season no matter where they're at in the round count. During the season, I will wait for three to five firings and then anneal. For hunting brass, I anneal after five firings, but I only do it in the off-season. It's been a little while since I annealed. The snow geese started flying through, so I started chasing them. But that's the beauty of having your process written down into steps or phases. Life happens. We get busy. But I can, I can stop wherever I want and then pick back up exactly where I left off all by looking at this piece of paper. It's time for step five, trimming the brass. I like to follow the 2, 10, 20 guideline. I will trim all the cases if the overall length of the brass varies by two thousandths or more between cases. The number 10 has two meanings. First, I will trim all the cases if any of the brass gets within 10 thousandths of the maximum case length. Second, the minimum the cases need to be trimmed is 10 thousandths from the maximum case length. And finally, 20. This is the maximum I will trim the cases to compared to the maximum case length. For example, the maximum case length for my 30BR is 1.520. Therefore, when I trim my brass, I'll trim in between 1.510 and 1.500. Honestly, I don't think the exact length matters as long as all cases are consistent. Personally, I like to trim closer to the 20 thousandths mark, so I will trim all the brass to 1.500. That means this piece of brass is going to be 1.500, and this piece of brass is going to be 1.500. That's the key to trimming. Make sure all the pieces are consistent. I use the LE Wilson case trimmer for all my trimming needs. Uh, it's pretty consistent, it goes pretty quick. And you can see this is my competition brass and it's not, I'm not trimming very much off at all. You can kind of hear it and I can definitely feel it. And what I do is I usually do three or four five, whatever, and then I will measure this case length, and I should be at 1.500. So I've done this enough that I trust that all these previous ones were at 1.500, and then I just start that process over, and I'll do another four, five, six, whatever it is, to measure that again. I'll just do three here to show you what my process looks like. So that one I took a little more off. I could feel that one. 
But again, when I go to measure it, 1.500. So I'm counting those as good. That is step five, trimming. Trimming from step five left a 90 degree angle on the case mouth. Our next to last step, step six, puts an angle or a bevel to the inside of the case mouth. Chamfering is important because it helps uniform the mouth and it also gives the bullet an easier start when it's time to seat the bullet. For both hunting and competition brass, I like to use the Wilson Uniform Deburring Tool. I chose the 45 degree angle on my cut. It's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, just like in trimming, you'll be able to hear and feel when the trimmer, or when this, in this case, the chamfering tool is working. One thing to be careful of is that you don't set this up so deep that it changes the length of your brass. So, you know, for example, uh, this piece is 1.500. I'm gonna set this up. And remeasure it, and it should stay at 1.500. If you're noticing that your brass is changing length, you probably got it set too deep, and you're making too deep of a cut on the case mouth. So this is what I'm going to do for the next 150 pieces or so. I have paid the price for not chamfering new brass. One time, when I seated the bullet, it actually buckled the case neck. And another time, the mouth actually shaved some of the copper off the jacket. It took me a while to figure that one out. So now, whenever I trim or use new brass, I always chamfer the case mouth. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Step seven, deburring. Deburring removes any burrs that are left on the outside of the case neck after trimming and chamfering. I like to use my RCBS uh, case prep center. There's a deburring tool on there. And it goes pretty quick. I can actually feel when it's smooth on there. So some of them take a little longer. Others, like that one took a little while. This one's, that one's already done. So after I get these 100 cases or so done, my brass is ready for the upcoming season. With today's ammo and component shortages, it's important to take care of our brass. Coming up with a routine and making a checklist will make it easier to keep track of where you're at in your process. The whole goal of this video was to show you what I do so that you can take bits and pieces of this and add it to your own routine. Until next time, enjoy the experience.